Hello everyone, this is Anne. I am back with this lunch bag journal that I've created over the last two videos. So the first video was to create the, the pouch, the journal. The other one was to decorate this cover. And now we're going to decorate the inside, all the pages, adding flips, pockets, laces, and all that yummy stuff. I want to add some ink at some spots of pages. I can use this, this dubber, like that. And all the edges. This one and at the top. And on both sides. Like that. Or I can use, there's another dubber that I like. It's those brushes. And those brushes, what I like is that I can really like go like this. And it brings some ink on the inside of the paper. I can add some spots here and there too. Compared to this, I find that it leaves, it tends to, let me give you an example with the, a scrap piece of paper. Like if I'm doing this and I go in, see, I don't like to see those lines because I'm doing circles. It's really hard to, like I can be good, but every time I make a mark like that and I ate that, which doesn't happen with the brush like the brush you just put some ink you start on the paper and you go in you see the difference so but this brush isn't really good with doing the edge like that it's it's a little bit more complicated to just do the edges so when i want to do the edge i i prefer this dubber you see the edges really easier and faster to do than with the brush. So depending on what I want to do, I'll use the dubber or the brush. Okay, so this one was done. So maybe I'll start with going just one line quickly like that with this one, this kind of dubber. And then I'll come back and add um, maybe spots of ink here and there. Um, maybe not too, because honestly, this is coffee stain paper. There's already like lots of spots from the coffee. But I, I love what it does with the ink. See, compare these first papers compared to these. So I don't do that all the time. But tonight, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay. Even like the um, parchment paper, this one I really love to do it. It makes a huge difference, you see? I look at this here. And now I'm inking the side. And now look. I really like the effect on... The vellum paper it looks like the real one this this one is the real no ink and they look like if they're real <clears throat> we need to do the sides a little bit too okay so i won't keep you I won't show you the whole thing. I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so I am done with the inking. Now I'm going to add some um, paper ruffle or lace ruffle, sari silk, chiffon silk at the edges. 
So I'm going to use those music sheets. What I've been doing, I did them in advance, but I've, I'll show you how I do one. This one, it's, a, it's an old, like really vintage music book um, from a church. And that paper is really thin. It's really thin, like, like a newspaper. And you're going to see, like, I can just create some folds like that. And I just go like that and they hold, they hold well and they fold better than if the paper is thicker. So they're really easy to do ruffles with and I love them a lot. Now I can add some ink as well at some spots of the edges. And um, I just glue them with my art glitter glue. So... I uh, I will pick at least four or five pages. So let's see if I start with this one. Let's see. I'll I'll put my paper beside just to make sure I do, I know how long it is, and I'll put some glue like that. And I just glue it, making sure it goes out, but not too much, because don't forget we have a spine here. And the first fold is here at the end of this pink line. So I need to stay within the lines. All right. And now I can skip maybe two, three pages. I'll put another one now this time down. I'll put my paper to kind of have an idea where I need to put the glue. And I'll make sure it goes out a little bit. That page was smaller, so I can leave it really out more than the other one. Let me add some ink on that one too. Okay, so now what it looks like, I always come back. Oh, we don't even see it. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's go to maybe, I tend to skip the middle because we opened the book like that. So I'll go right after the middle, but this one will be for in the middle of the page. <clears throat> okay, I'll make sure it goes out enough, but not too much. Adding a little bit of ink. And now if I look at that, I'll add another one at the bottom because we couldn't see the other one. This one will go like that. And a little bit of ink. Okay, so we have paper ruffles. And it looks like this. So now we're going to add, at least there's not that much of pages, so we cannot put five or six of each. But I'll put, let's say, two chiffon silk or sari silk ruffle and one, two or three laces. So I'll go grab some and I'll come back. Okay, so I am back. I have a lace that is like a pinchy beige. I have this one that I love that is 100% cotton and it's all white. I have this pink one that I love, but I love to trim the edges. So let me show you. If you never saw me before, I always, I don't, I love it to look like if it's been trimmed from like a bigger piece instead of from a lace. So I'm going the whole thing. I can stop here. It's really long. And I'll trim the other edge too. So 
and I just go quickly as you can see no overthinking there I just want it I just want to trim the the edge it looks more shabby chic to me <laughs> and all right so this one is ready I'll still keep that I don't know maybe I'll use it some someday and I have a chiffon silk and a sari silk so let's start um let's look at that maybe this one has kind of a bigger flower the edge is really interesting so if I don't want to have a big peak I can put it that way and on the page I'll have the big flower inside that might be a good idea actually instead or that would be like that but then that that would be too long so yeah really I think I should put it from the inside and for that first page actually I don't think I'm going to put a lace I should use one of my um little uh, snippets that I'm creating with embroidery knots so it's too white maybe not those one I'll come back I'll I'll get my stash and I'll come back to this page this one has the music sheet ruffle so this one has a nice design so maybe this last part so I was thinking this one, instead of using the whole line, I should just do like a little part of it, like this. Like just a section to kind of keep my stash. Okay, and I'll try. I can put it that way or this way. So I, I think I'm going to go this way because it's going to be easier for me to measure and make sure it doesn't go out too much. Okay, I'm just measuring. Now I'm going to glue. I'm holding it at the place I want it. And just taking a section adding the glue and now I'm going to do the other side and I'm not gluing more than that because I want to make sure that we can still slide something behind it all right so for that page we have the lace <clears throat> paper ruffle so okay this one maybe we can add a, tr a ruffle of sari silk um yeah sari silk for the sari silk what i do is i just put a big line of glue okay and now i extend my sari silk a little bit like that which side is the good one it's hard to say but i think this this side is more shiny a little bit so i'll just i'll just make sure i unfold it a little bit so the glue can can grab the fabric correctly somewhere in the middle and then I'll still fold it. So now that there's glue everywhere at the back of this, I can, oops, put it back. It's a little bit tricky, but it's, it's always like that and it's always ending up correctly. So I'm creating folds while it already has some glue. You can, you can lift it up go back on it and I can add more glue if I need okay at this point I can trim 
remove that. And sometimes I, I just replay with my fold. If I don't like it, I unfold it and refold it because the glue is not really dry at this point. So, or I can add a little piece, a little bit of glue. And I, I just look at the overall looking. Is it great? Or there's a fold that I really don't like. So this one, I'll leave it like that. So we now have this on the side. <clears throat> Let's keep going on. So this is the middle. I'm not doing anything on the side because I like it to be um, on both sides. Paper ruffle here. So now we need something here. So I'll go with a lace. Okay, so maybe I should go with this one. So I'll put it like that. And I'll just put a line of glue and I'll put it on top of it. Like that. Okay. Make sure I'm using the, the good side. Here you go. So we can still slide something behind here at some point. And now we can go with a ruffle. So maybe this one I'm gonna use because we don't have that much of paper, yeah. So I'm gonna use the white one. So, a full line here. And sometimes I just, when it's folded like that, Sometimes I just place it like that and I don't even do a ruffle. I just place it on top and leave it like that. And I'm going to trim it. I'll let it dry. So just like that paper ruffle here so another trim here that would be this one for a lace like that I prefer to sew it so I'll go to my sewing machine and I'll do a ruffle while I'm sewing I always start with a fold like that I do my first stitch and while it's going through, I create the folds and I give it some angles, you know, not just going straight, straight, straight. I give it some angle that way, this way, that way. So at the end, it doesn't look like a straight line that has been done as a rough, a ruffle. So I'll come back. Okay, so I am back. So... I've sewn my ruffle of lace and I didn't realize I was not going straight at all. I'll put something here to hide that, but it looks like that so far. So already that journal is really better and has a shabby chic look. We could just stop there and it looks great, but let's keep going on. So now that I've done all the ruffles at the end of the pages, I'm going to go through the journal and add something to almost every pages. So I was thinking that I should just add a little piece of fabric here because I want to do uh, to add an embroidery and I just this one I played a little bit before before uh, turning on my video. I thought I could do something like this, but this is too big actually. Okay, let me grab another piece. 
Okay, what about a leftover of a pillowcase or a bed sheet that I print on? So this is between the labels. So what about, about I do something like this? Yeah, it's gonna work. So I'll just put some glue. So I'll start by adding some glue. To do kind of a ruffle so I'm gonna move it completely like randomly in all the directions possible <clears throat> to create the ruffle I need more glue all right so it's gonna create some dimension and then a little bit of cheesecloth that has been tea stain or coffee stained and why I put that it's because this is a kind of too white for this contrast here so if I put a little bit of beige I'm gonna equilibrate all of that so now I just need to figure out how I want it to be placed maybe something like that <laughs> this is how picky I can be sometimes. All right, this makes sense. So I'm going to lift up everything, put some glue, and then lift up just the fabric cluster with the French knots on it glue it down and that should be good all right we need to let it dry what about here this is a pocket so the inside i don't need to decorate but here i could put something like a little lace maybe maybe i can put back this one like i used for the cover the flap to the closure um <clears throat> five is too long three three seems good And like that, and maybe a little scrap of lace. Let me see in my stash. What about that? Yeah, this can work out, or it can be pink I just don't want to hide too much that flower so but maybe I can tweak a little bit by cutting the the lace so this one or this one let me trim like this and I like that actually so that's it that's gonna be this no overthinking because we don't have time for that When it's cute, it's cute. When when we know it's cute, it's cute. That's it. 
well maybe it goes with my personality i never really had any problem to take some decisions <laughs> so i don't have problems taking decisions doing junk journals too here i'll just remove a little piece just to show up the rows a little bit more Here we go. This is what it's going to look like. <clears throat> Let me show you a close up. So like this and the cluster looks like that. So for those pages, I think that that could be enough. I could maybe add a little lace here or something, but I'll come back to that. So now on those pages, maybe I can add a pocket here. I have the ruffle on that page. I have some cute designs. So that would be a perfect page for journaling. But here, what about a little pocket? So there's two ways to do pockets, corner pockets like that. Maybe I can use my pockets from the kit. The, the Roses Paradise, I have those pockets like that that you just, that you just fold. They're almost too big for here. So I'm going to do it the other way. The other way I like is to take a square. So in this case, I did three inches squares because they need to be a little bit smaller than the page. And you fold into two. You add a little bit of inking. You can open it too. Inking everywhere. And then you glue it like that on the page it, you can glue it perfectly aligned with the page but when i tear one side i tend to make it on purpose not really aligned so i'll just put glue on two sides of my triangle Like that. So we have a pocket here. We have a pocket here. And we have a little secret place for journaling. This is why I like that. So what about what we put in for this pocket? I'm thinking I can maybe put some tickets from the the roses paradise kit i printed on both sides so they're gonna look good on both sides and i'm gonna take those with the little words here delightful so sweet vintage okay so how do we do that first here what i can do is i cut with my scissor you see i'm cutting and i'm moving the paper so it creates those the like a tiered edge like that so i start cutting and i move the paper at the same time trying to follow the waves there you go then i'm gonna do just a straight line with my scissors following the side of the ticket like that and then I'm, I'm gonna use a punch to just do the holes just a regular punch for paper you know in those old days when we went to school <laughs> this is as old as that in my case um, trying to align and they are perfectly 
the good size for that. It wouldn't matter that much if your punch is a little bit bigger too. Nobody would know. Now I'm gonna ink the sides. Both sides, actually. And then I'm gonna fold. So I'm folding, trying to align, to align the holes and with the, the white there. And then I'm gonna ink the holes and the middle. And I'm gonna do that for this one as well. So I'm aligning the holes as much as possible. It doesn't need to be that perfect. So here we go, that's what we have. And on that side, I can do the other side too, quickly, like just slightly. So we have a line of tickets like that. They're cute on both sides. And now I'm gonna do one with the words. So I'll come back when I'm done with that one. Okay, so I have two lines of tickets and I made sure I'm not taking the same size. So this one has four smaller one and three bigger one for that line. Oh boy. So let's say I can maybe place one that is not folded and the other one might be folded a little bit so we kind of see dimension and I'm missing something here. So what about there's that letter there in the kit and I'm gonna tear it with a ruler. So let me make some space a little bit. I just need something flat to kind of tear. So I'm gonna follow the sides, but I won't, I'll leave a little bit of the design so I don't have any white from the paper. And because I'm tearing with a ruler, you can see that my edge is not perfectly straight like if I would have cut with scissors. So that's what I like about a ruler. Here you go. So I have the page. Maybe I should ink a little bit just quickly because I, I don't want an edge that is really, really dark. But just to remove a little bit of the white. And now maybe I can fold it not really aligned like that. Like this is on purpose. <clears throat> so if I take back my journal, now I can slide it like that. And we have the tickets. And here we go, we have a page here. Now I can decorate maybe here a little bit, that would be great. Let's start with a cheesecloth. Maybe like that. And maybe a little piece of that left over from the doily. So let's see if that would go. That could be just that, actually. It's, it looks great to me. Okay. 
So I'm going to lift it, put enough glue, and do the other side. We have one page done. This looks like that. With the tickets. All right, now if we move on, here we have a pocket. This page is already nice, so nothing to be done here. Maybe I can leave that one for journaling or to add something. I'm gonna add something in that pocket. And I've been thinking, I can show you my latest kit, which is button cards. In different, it's always the same button cards, but different backgrounds. So one with blue and greens, pink for that one, in the be beige and uh, coffee stain, paper brownish. And we have some with pattern paper from previous kits that I've done that were looking good. So there's more pages to that kit. But for example, these, I've been printing both sides. And these are coffee stain paper pattern. This is a coming kit of scans from my coffee stain paper to, to just print at the back of postcards and cards and or just papers so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take two pink one they're gonna be sliding here and i'm gonna decorate them so i thought maybe i could because it's all black i could do the sides inking with my um, charcoal ink. It is not black, but that would just make a slight difference. And I didn't think about, I have a coffee stain print at the back. So maybe I should go with brown here. So what I'm going to do is, now that I've done the charcoal everywhere, and it's kind of a mistake actually because the back is brown, I'm going to do both colors. So I'm doing the charcoal black right now, and now that I'm done, I'm going to do the vintage brownish. So they'll have both. See, we can put both. There's no real mistakes in junk, junk journals. You can always fix. And actually, I love the effect of mixing the two colors. I really like it. You see? As you can see, I've already placed some X where we should glue or stitch the buttons. But in the kits, you see you have some with four buttons, three in a line, four in a line, uh, five in the line so you have different options there so there's two ways to glue those buttons or attach those buttons i've been doing a set and two fancy buttons they don't match because it's hard to find matching buttons so when you have two, it's a little bit tricky. Either you, glue, you go with fancy buttons like that or a big one and a small one that are almost the same. But when you have like a row of, of five or four or three, it's easier to put three different ones like they don't need to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch two of those and the other two I'm going to glue them with my glue gun but still add some 
um, some thread to it, like if they are sewn. So let me show you. I'm gonna sew them on themselves. So there's a knot here already. And I took like a beige off-white thread. So I'm gonna go through three, four times, I'm guessing, when I'm gonna find there's enough. Let's see, this is three times. It looks good. So I can do maybe another one. So four time, and I'll just create a knot here to secure that and cut the excess. I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Okay, I'm not sure if my glue gun is ready. I think so. I'll just put two big dots of glue and I'll glue them there. I'll just make sure that my holes are not aligned or perfectly aligned. If they're not aligned, they need to be perfectly unaligned. Not, it needs to look that they're totally opposite, not uh, they should be aligned and uh, you failed. You see what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, so I have those two. So that's a way to do my knot. One button at a time. And maybe what you can do is place the button where you want it and then poke two holes so you know where to start here. So I'm gonna start like that. Oh boy, what happened here? You always need to look at your thread, eh? It can be really messing up. Okay, this and in that one, just for the first round, let's say, you need to go with your not your holes and I'm gonna go through this one here just to secure it like that. And now I can go freely back and forth if I use the same holes. Like that. And I'm going to stop there just with two. Secure that. My thread is kind of playing with me. All right. And I'll do the other one the same way. So we have those two button cards and I thought I could slide one or two. It's too bulky actually because they're pretty big. I'll keep that one for something else. So I'll put that button card and maybe I can put a little tag. Oh no, I know. There's a um, lace holder into the kit. So let me find my fancy yarn, this one. And what I do is I start with a little bit of washi tape. And then I turn around until I find the amount is not too bulky, but it doesn't seem like I didn't put enough. And 
I just go inside and attach it that way. If it's lace, I tend to put, um, to use a needle, but this is not lace, so doing it like that would work better, I think. So let's put the button card and the fancy yarn on the lace holder. So this is a yummy pocket. Now, should I decorate it? Maybe, yeah, I can add something there. Oh, maybe this beautiful, beautiful here with, again, a little bit of cheesecloth. What about that? This is beautiful. So here or here. Just trying in case I change my mind. I like it at the top actually because we have this lace here. So I'm going to put it at the top. I'm gonna glue my cheesecloth first so I can see where I'm adding the glue and then I'm gonna add more glue. It's not easy to glue the cheesecloth and I'll stick with a little angle. It's cute. We have this and the button card. There you go. Now that page, maybe it's about time to do a little flap. So we have kind of a little design here. It's not the best, but it's still, I like it. And I tend to like to put some design paper on my pages. So let's say creating a little flap. So what I'll do first, I'm gonna tear the sides like that. So because my my edge here is a clean cut, I can maybe just glue it like that. And what about the other side? Would it be nice if I fold it a little bit? Actually, if I fold it, let's see, I tear that and I fold just the top like that and I would glue it here so this side when I'm lifting it up, it lifts up at 100%. So it looks great and I can add something there too. So I'm gonna ink the sides and we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna ink the fold as well, right here on both sides. Okay, so let me place the paper. Let me look how it looks on that side. Like that, that's fine. Adding the glue. go yeah that looks great and here we can lift it up totally and it decorates the page I like it all right these here maybe I can put two tickets here actually I'm thinking 
those tickets. Delightful. So let me show you. So first I will cut the sides. Okay, first and then I'm gonna align my sides, fold it. I can punch my holes together so they are fully aligned. And here, instead of, well, yeah, I can cut both at the same time. So that way they are perfectly the same size. Let me see. Yeah, that's okay on both sides. Now I'm going to ink my sides. I can glue it like that. I'm thinking I fold it, but I want the edge here to be like this one. So I'm going to cut it while holding them together. So they're going to be kind of the same. And ink them back. All right, so what we do, I'll put some glue. Because it's a vellum paper or tracing paper, tracing paper, we kind of need to put it on both sides because otherwise, see, we would see through the paper. glue on that one too and we just align we just align them and here you go we have a ticket there we have a ticket I can put a little piece of lace that would look good too let's see what about a little piece of lace like that? Just to add more lace. I love lace. Makes me happy to see the lace. All right, that would be it for that. Now... So maybe I can add this label here, fancy label, but I'm going to leave the middle not glued. So if we want to slide something behind it, that would still be feasible. And I'm going to add half pearls here. So adding a little tiny piece of glue and my half pearl. Same here. This is a delicate operation. <laughs> okay, I'll let it dry without touching it. So 
What about on that side? Maybe I can put a belly band or just leave it like that. But what about this? Maybe with a little bit of lace. Yeah, I like that. So let me trim that. That should be, I should cut here. This, I'm gonna ink the sides. Just slightly, but at least it's not fully white, it seems like. It shows that we've put some ink, this dress ink. So this, like that. I'm gonna glue it, cause I, I know it looks good and I like it. And it's gonna be perfect as a talk spot. So it's a belly band, like that. Okay, so I stopped the camera and I found some something that could be cute. So I have this piece of lace and maybe that fabric that I want to create kind of a ruffle. And so I'll start with the ruffle of the fabric because you need to start somewhere at some point. So I'll do add some glue. And for the ruffle, I'll just fold like that and try to change the angle like that. I'll just make sure that I can go through my belly band in case some glue would have slide a little bit. And what about if I'm adding a little lace? Maybe, maybe I should add a little bit of cheesecloth again and and that lace. I, I like that actually. So that would be something like that and then this is a belly band. Like I can slide a document or something. So I'm gonna glue this to the fabric. And I'll just make sure that the glue doesn't go through the fabric and glue the page. Just need to make sure about that while it's drying. So that would look like this. It's cute. It's really cute. 